Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here at Marion Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and today we are going to be taking a look at Kawai's K300 RS. This is a hybrid piano, meaning this is a mix of both digital and acoustic technology. Uh, and a lot of times manufacturers throw that label hybrid around anytime there is a single shred of one or the other worlds uh, that are mixed up. A digital piano with one piece of wood in it suddenly becomes a hybrid piano. Well, with the K300RS, this really isn't the case. Hybrid is a very applicable uh, and a very accurate term. Uh, this is both a full acoustic piano, it is a K300 at its core, uh, but blended into this is essentially the guts of a CA99 Kawai digital piano with four transducers directly connected uh, to the soundboard as well as a 256 note polyphony sound engine that contains the SKEX sample set as well as a host of other instruments. It's a really cool uh, feature. Uh, it's a very, very interesting playing experience. We're gonna be talking all about it. So thank you so much for joining us. If it is the first time to the channel, we'd appreciate it if you did subscribe. Helps you to stay up to date with all the videos that we are constantly coming out with, and that is quite a few. So without further ado, let's get started right away with Kawai's K300RS. So, we may be in front of a special edition of the K300. It's, it's probably not even accurate to call it a special edition because uh, from everything I've heard, Kawhi can't build these things fast enough. And this is going to be here uh, permanently on the scene as a product. So this is really more like um, a, a version of or, or an enhanced uh, edition of the K300. So as a K300, it's got the Millennium 3 Action uh, just like our standard K300 run-of-the-mill version. And so with the Millennium 3 Action comes a couple of things that Kawhi uh, has innovated for their most recent version of, of the Upright uh, Millennium 3. One of those is the extended key sticks. Uh, we've talked about this a number of times in several of our Kawhi videos. Those extended key sticks are not, uh, you know, this is not an unbelievably sophisticated uh, feature they've added. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think that uh, I'm, I'm glad they did it. Basically what it, it does is it reduces uh, the difference between how uh, playing closer to the end of the key is going to feel versus playing in. So the longer the overall key stick, the less proportional difference there's going to be in the weight between the front of the key and the back of the key. Makes a lot of sense. The other thing that it does is because you're extending the length of uh, the key stick, you're also increasing the potential torque or force that you can actually apply to the capstan. So I suppose theoretically, if you uh, kind of adjusted the geometry of the rest of the action, you get a little bit more dynamic range out of the action as well. So you got increased dynamic range and generally just a more homogeneous feel regardless of where you are playing uh, on the key surface. So uh, that's what you're getting with the Millennium 3 in the K300. You're also getting uh, a nice uh, satin finish on the black key. You're getting a polished uh, white finish. Uh, I don't believe the K300 uses uh, Neotex like they do on some of the higher level grands. It would be nice if they included it, but I get that for the price that the K300 comes in, you can't have everything under the sun. Uh, along with the action on uh, the Millennium 3 K300, you are getting uh, double felted mahogany core hammers. That's pretty unusual for an instrument under uh, the $10,000 US range. Uh, and so the mahogany is a lighter hammer uh, core. It means that it stays on the string less. It's easier to bounce off. There's less force, less mass, uh, which means less uh, distortion uh, when you're really, really playing uh, on, the, on the higher dynamic levels of this instrument. So we've got an easier to manage action, we've got an increased dynamic range out of that action, um, and we've got a double felted mahogany core, uh, which blah, 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 basically means that when you're really pushing the upper volumes of this piano, you're gonna have a reduced uh, chance of distortion, uh, which is great. Uh, it's no real surprise that the K300 has been 
such uh, a darling of the institutional world because this has made an ideal practice instrument for advanced instruments. Uh, because this is an RS version that we're looking at, there are some modifications to the action which need to be pointed out. Uh, and, uh, and, and I have some observations to pass along on that front. For people who have had some experience with player piano systems in the past, and uh, I mean, this is not technically a player piano system, but you know, five years ago, this type of setup would have fallen into that product category of kind of a player system. Um, there is a part of the key in there uh, in order to silence uh, the um, action or, or prevent the hammer from hitting the string, there needs to be a bar, a silencing bar, uh, that basically gets in the way of the hammer and the string. And that's when the auras as, as an instrument is able to basically go completely digital and stop the acoustic sound of this piano uh, from playing. And that's really its primary appeal. I mean, it does a whole bunch of other things. Um, but when you think about the uh, ability to take a great acoustic piano by day and turn it into a great digital piano by night or whatever might be driving your acoustic needs, that's a pretty cool feature. And you see that across a few different models in the industry. Sometimes what happens in these systems is you put the silence bar down and you wind up having to regulate the action based on where the silent bar is. And you have to have uh, the let off point uh, occur before uh, the hammer or the, or the shank hits that bar so that the action doesn't totally feel uh, messed up when you're playing in silent mode. Uh, you can't, uh, you know, the jack still cannot be in contact with the knuckle when it hits that bar, otherwise it just doesn't even feel like a piano, let alone a weird feeling piano, it just doesn't feel right at all. So you have to do that. Uh, what happens when you have retrofit kits sometimes, or even, even in factory releases sometimes, is uh, there's a lot of inaccuracy about where that silence bar is. So you, you regulate it to feel okay in silent mode, but the minute that you go back to just regular acoustic mode, the regulation is really sloppy. It doesn't feel tight at all. Uh, there's all it is very, very poor control and lower dynamic range. On the K300 Aras, you have virtually perfect regulation uh, in both uh, acoustic mode as well as digital mode. As I am playing in acoustic mode, as I press the middle pedal down, which activates the silence bar uh, and takes it into digital mode, I'm not feeling any difference whatsoever uh, in regulation. I'm not noticing any difference in repetition speed. Uh, you know, this may be a small thing, or at least it seems like it's a small thing I'm harping on, but this is actually a really big thing because this was a deal breaker for people wanting a serious acoustic instrument that also wanted a silent system. It was, it was almost a given that you were gonna have regulation issues. So the fact that Kawhi has solved that problem, and I don't know whether it's just better quality control in the factory, or they've redesigned the silent bar uh, so that, it, it, that they can get that type of tight regulation. However they've accomplished it, this should silence a lot of critics of these types of instruments uh, that normally would have said, well, yeah, that's great, it's a nice toy, but when I don't want it on, it doesn't feel right. Just not the case. Um, and I've played the K500Rs as well. Again, they've solved that regulation issue. So that's really, uh, I mean, it's, this is cool. It just makes this instrument both uh, credible to a serious acoustic player as well as a hobbyist who's, who's just really interested in the digital features. Uh, but more and more, um, the acoustic needs of, or the sound needs, management needs of any type of player involves um, having to or being able to silence an instrument. I'm a fairly new parent at home. I've got an 18 month old and I've got an acoustic piano at the house, I can hardly ever use it. I'm not in a townhouse, I'm not in an apartment, uh, you know, I'm in a detached uh, dwelling, so it's not neighbors I'm worried about, 
it's family members and you know you're in a home that's operating on an 18 hour 20 hour day between when people are waking up and going to bed it's just really difficult to find moments in life where an acoustic piano isn't getting in somebody's way and so i think this is the beginning of a very uh, strong trend in the industry towards instruments uh, that can accommodate that type of sound management. So uh, that's a quick discussion on the action. We are going to move on to the tone of the instrument, of course, a whole discussion around the, uh, the digital componentry of this, which is, is very cool. Please stick around to the end of the video so you can hear all about uh, the Onkyo tech uh, that's, that's going on on the inside of the instrument. But again, Millennium 3, extended key lengths, you've got uh, double felted uh, mahogany core hammers, uh, and most remarkably, because we're talking about the Aura's edition, uh, virtually perfect regulation whether you're on or off of that digital uh, mode with the silence bar. So thank you so much for sticking with us. As a K300, there's a lot of really good things to talk about with this instrument off the bat when it comes to tone. One of them is that you, uh, the way that they bridge the instrument, the way that the scale design uh, uh, has uh, been implemented on this instrument, uh, you get a, a longer than average uh, bass string. Number one, number two, number three bass strings uh, are anywhere from a centimeter to an inch longer than what I would describe as an average 48 inch piano. So you're getting a little bit more bass oomph, a bit more clarity, uh, slightly less uh, copper whining that's needed. So you're getting uh, better control of your upper partials uh, on your bass. So just more clarity and more uh, just kind of power uh, that you're getting out of the lower octave of the instrument. Um, one of the most uh, clearly notable features about the sound producing parts of this instrument though is the tapered solid spruce soundboard uh, or as uh, I think Steinway when they first uh, engineered this they called it the diaphragmatic uh, soundboard. This is um, in itself not particularly remarkable uh, to mention because there are a lot of pianos that have this but most of them are two, three, four, five times more expensive than the K300. So like a lot of the other features with this instrument, it isn't what they've done which makes it a standout, it's what they've done for the price which makes it a standout. Uh, so we've got a tapered solid spruce, um, uh, Sitka spruce soundboard on this instrument which makes it very responsive and very dynamic. Uh, you can get quite quiet, but the, the whole uh, uh, horsepower of this piano really leaps um, up and, and gives you a lot of, of really cool tonal palettes to work with as a player. Um, Kawhi usually tends to be considered a little darker or um, a little more uh, colorful. I mean, you hear lots of uh, words that people try and come up with to describe piano tone. And most often the Kawhi K300 is compared to the Yamaha U1, which I think I, I, it's accurate to say that it's usually described as a brighter piano. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a, for a variety of reasons. Um, one of them is that Kawhi tends to ha voice their hammers a little bit darker out of the factory, whereas Yamaha traditionally tended to voice it uh, a little bit brighter. Um, but another reason is that the Kawhi has a lower uh, scale tension uh, than the Yamaha does, and that can lead to a slightly warmer sound as well out of the instrument. When we get into the sound of the digital components of the Ares, this is really what tends to blow people away. And I've seen this happen in real life, uh, I don't know, a dozen times or so. We are showing a customer this instrument, and we get to the point where we then say, by the way, there are no speakers, as you would traditionally think of a speaker, on this piano. When you're hearing uh, things like strings, Yeah, when you're hearing that, you're not hearing a speaker. And people go, what? I don't know what you mean. I mean, clearly it's not the piano making the sound, so you know, where is that coming from? It's actually coming from the soundboard itself. Uh, 
when you take off the front, we'll make sure that we get B-roll of this so you know exactly what it is that we're talking about. This piano is equipped with four Onkyo transducers of various sizes, uh, which basically is just a fancy way of saying that they're magnets uh, uh, that are directly attached to the soundboard. And so those magnets are turning the soundboard into one giant electronic speaker, but it's using the natural spruce uh, to give it a very, very distinctive uh, tone. And uh, the closest thing I've ever seen to this on another piano uh, musical instrument like this is what Kawhi has been doing with their CA series, the CA99, CA98, 97, before that, and a few other previous generations, where you had a transducer on a small, uh, you know, a small soundboard. I've never seen anything that's tackled it at this level with this amount of success. The, the bass response that you get out of using uh, a transducing surface like a soundboard that's that big is just crazy. I mean, honestly, you've never, your ears have really never heard anything quite like it uh, before um, because most of the speakers we listen to in our lives are, you know, five inch cones, six inch cones, seven inch cones. Uh, you know, try a 50 inch cone and it's really quite a remarkable effect. And it's, they're not overpowering the speaker, so when you're mixing the normal acoustic playing uh, sound of the piano with the electronic sound that's being also uh, kind of transduced through the soundboard, uh, you're not getting a lot of distortion. You're not getting a lot of sort of uh, muddy signal. It's, it's actually remarkably clear, and you get a lot of detail out of that. So there's all kinds of combinations of playing here uh, where you can take advantage of this really interesting technology. Uh, we already know of the most basic one uh, on here, which is, of course, just to play it like an acoustic piano. Now, you can combine that uh, without any kind of silent option. You can actually turn this on so that you're going to get uh, like a string or some other electronic sound to blend with the normal acoustic sound of the piano um, in real time without using the silent feature, without having to put on headphones. And so you get this kind of effect. So that's putting through electronic sound and I'm of course using the piano uh, with its normal acoustic mode as well. If I press down the middle pedal and so now I've engaged the silent bar, I am going to get uh, just the electronic sound now coming through the soundboard. Uh, and so that is going to sound like this. So that's not the acoustic sound of the piano at all. That is the electronic sound being transduced through the soundboard, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that is 256 notes of polyphony with the SKEX sample set. This is essentially the brain of a CA99 sitting inside uh, this piano. Uh, and then finally, uh, if you want, you can then put headphones in here and play the entire thing completely quietly. Nobody's going to hear anything going on. Three in the morning, can't sleep. You're just going to kill some time. Uh, you're going to put your headphones on with a handy little holder underneath. You're going to plug that into the headphone jack. You can set that to acoustic piano. You can dual mode this just like uh, any other digital piano. So you can blend piano and strings together. Uh, this has a Killer Rhodes electric piano sound on it, uh, quite a few pipe organs. 
uh, and it's all there available on, uh, it's probably some sort of an Android powered, basically mini tablet that's built right into the piano. Uh, and it's quite slick and of course completely disappears, no buttons visible whatsoever when you just close it. Uh, soft close, didn't even think to mention that, but of course, yes, just like on the normal K300, it's got that soft close feature. So the K300 Aras is one of the most interesting, innovative piano products that I have really ever seen hit the market in my entire time in the industry. Um, I, I'm not saying that uh, with hyperbole. I'm not saying that uh, to be salesy or try and spin this. It's just really an interesting, cool uh, product that I wasn't expecting. Kawhi uh, announced it about a year ago, uh, and we can barely keep them every time we get any stock, they're immediately gone. Uh, and so if you can get to a showroom somewhere uh, where, you know, close to where you live, try one out. Hopefully they have one on the floor. If you're anywhere near Toronto, hey, why not? Come visit us. We'd love to have you in the showroom uh, and you can come in and just try the Aras uh, for fun. I think you'd be really pleasantly surprised at what this has to offer. A silent piano, a really great acoustic piano uh, in its own right, but then this just magical integration uh, of really high-end speaker technology with a real soundboard, um, a seamless you know, user interface, and it just makes for an engaging, highly musical experience. And what else would you possibly want from a musical instrument but that? A musical, engaging experience every single time you sit down. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you taking an interest uh, both in the channel as well as the instrument. Hopefully this has given you some new insights into whether this might be a cool choice for you and or your family. If it's the first time that you've been stopping by the channel, we would really appreciate it. If you did hit that subscribe button, uh, we are always making new videos. We try and make them useful. We try and make them entertaining. Uh, and we always invite you to leave a comment. We do our best to respond to as many of those as we possibly can. So have yourselves a great day. We will see you back for more videos very soon in the future. My name is Stu Harrison, and you've been watching the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel.